All right, Mopar people, welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe. Today we're gonna to try to get the Dyno 440 finally buttoned up and onto my engine run stand, wherever it is over there. Follow along with me if you will. I'll kind of explain what's been going on. So the engine looks a little bit different since last time. Uh, simple things I didn't show on video. Uh, oil pumps bolted on, water pumps bolted on, and you'll see I have some washers stacked here in the thin washer there because that's made to hold a, a alternator bolt or alternator bracket into place whenever all that's in place. I think he's going to use a serpentine kit or something. So I'm just leaving that as is, but these bolts were too long and they're the fancy ARP ones. So oil pump, they sent, I think the top two bolts, the other one, other two are factory bolts I had to use. I don't think you'll ever see them. Uh, oil pans finally on after all that catastrophe. I've got this side's rockers just mocked into place and tightened down once, um, or torqued down right now. And I just, I'm going to triple check between my push rods and all that, that it looks like a mile of room. I've set my end play or side play on them. I think it's 15 to 20 thousandths on these PRWs. Um, Smith Brothers push rods are here. You can see those. They look really nice. Uh, these are the Gatorman lifters that we got from Ed at Ed's Machine and the Urson Cam also came from Ed. Um, I didn't have my little thermostat piece, so if you look down in here, I have a cruel piece of uh, flat tin that I basically just punched a hole out in and cut it out to be the same size. So it's a restrictor plate uh, for the thermostat while it's on the run stand and while it's on the dyno. So all that looks nice. Um, Joe's going to come over in a little while and we will final lash the back. You have to set the preload on the lifters themselves. So that's not a big deal. Uh, but I was noticing as I was screwing the studs in. So let me show you. I had to buy longer studs because the ones with the kit are too short with the shims. See my shim here. So they give you a different shim and a different spacer. And the ones they sent are just hardware store bolts. I'm not comfortable just using hardware store bolts on a setup like this. Um, I don't really want to use them on anything. But So as I, what I've been doing, now that they're kind of close in line, I'll just pop one out, screw a stud in, and just go down the line and get them fairly tight, but not all the way torqued. I'll do my final torque here shortly. I still need to yank these off one more time, clean up the rockers, and clean out the shafts. I want to show you what's inside these shafts. Uh, other thing today, we can finally get the oil pump primed. I've got my priming rods custom made from many years ago. Anyway, priming rod, we can get it primed up. I'll throw my uh, gauge on this. And like I said, if we could get it bolted on the run stand, that would be fantastic. This one is actually better. I know I'm, it's hard to hold that and hold a camera. The other side looked like a inside of an old chimney. So I'm, I'm a lot more pleased with this. Notice they do have the oil holes offset. And they tell you in the directions how to put those. I'm gonna take my Goodson brush, run through here. Uh, a little piece of t-shirt and a brake cleaner running, running in and out three or four times and finally be able to reassemble this. If you're wondering, or if you always forget, the best way that I can remember on what direction does a distributor spin in your Mopar, big blocks, you have to go back in time to get a big block, right? They don't, they don't put big blocks in anything anymore, so you got to go back in time. So think of it as counterclockwise. Turn the clock back to go back in time to get yourself a big block. That's how I remember it. So I got to get my drill set up here. I primed it just a second the other day and it I think it shot up to 50 pounds or something. Uh, I tried to make myself some little dams here to catch some oil. There'll probably be a gusher and I'll have to clean up a mess, but that's fine. I've got an old school rod that I think my dad made and I try to keep it off of the bushing in the center because it might try to chew into that. So. Won't take much here. I see our line moving. You can hear the squish. So we 
got pressure right there. Looks great. I'll go take a full feed if I need to, but I wanted to kind of sneak up on it because I don't have any coming out of my rockers yet. So as most of y'all know, the cam has holes in it. We have to time those holes with the crankshaft versus the each side of the rocker. So those holes are in that number four journal there. Real. You can see this side is starting to get oil. See the oil dripping between our deals here. It's going slowly. What I'm looking for is it to actually come out, get around here so it can get on those push rod ends. And if you want to see the passenger side, my drill's about to die. Get my drip on. I do believe whenever these are moving, they're gonna start rolling it down to the edge of the roller. I might actually uh, pop a valve cover off as it's running, just double check, be sure it all looks good. But I've had two or three, depending on where they're at here, uh, roll some oil into here. So I think we're doing all right. It definitely doesn't have, it's not over oiling the top end right now. So that's good. I'm gonna get our valley plate put on and intake finally. Intake is in place. I got our valley plate in. These were Hughes engines hold downs that literally said Hughes engines engraved to them. So we flipped that over because Hughes engines didn't build this engine and it's not their engine. To show you, I'm not going to get out my boroscope because I can see, I can see our port window real nicely. So if anything, that gasket is just kind of sitting in the center there. Yeah, same thing. Like it looks like we need to scoot back with the intake just a little bit towards the rear of the engine. Hopefully you can see that. Our window at the top looks really good. Our intake needs to scoot backwards. That's what it shows on both sides. So I'll bring you all the way out and you can kind of see it. Shift just barely, just like that. Didn't take much over there. And we are there. Yeah. Check us out. Yep. I feel really good about it. I think I can go ahead and torque her down and then I'll double check it to see if we're too high or too low. But I need to trim these gaskets again. They give you some really big gaskets that hang over and they're ugly. So I'm just trimming them nice and tight to the valley pan too. But let me do the tighten up and we'll be back. And there she is on the stand finally. I got a lot of plumbing to do now, but I got her hung up. Next time you see this thing, it will make smoke or fire, one or the other. I appreciate y'all watching. All right, Mopar people.